Hi, Chef Dino here. We're going to talk about plate garnish today. I'm at my restaurant, Corbett's, in Louisville, Kentucky. One of the most frequently asked questions I get is, how can I make my plate? How can I jazz it up a little bit, make it look a little bit nicer? And I'm going to show you some things from the very simple to the very complex. The simplest, certainly, and the easiest is doing a strawberry fan. Just take a strawberry, like so, leave the top on so you have a base to hold on to, and then with a paring knife, you can go through and make nice vertical cuts about maybe a sixteenth of an inch apart. But I'm still keeping the base intact. Very, very simple and end up with a nice fan. This can be used for desserts, it can be used for uh, salad presentations, even some proteins if you're doing a uh, in the summer and you've done a grilled fish with a compound butter or something you want to garnish it with fresh fruit, you can put this right on top. That is very simple. The next thing, everybody wants to learn how to make a tomato rose. The tomato rose is, it's a little bit difficult, but with some practice, I think you can perfect it. The most important thing is to make sure you have a base for your rose to set on. So I'm taking my paring knife once again, and I'm going in to the bottom of the tomato, see, like so, and I'm cutting a base, basically, but I'm going to leave that base attached. And then just under the surface of the tomato, I'm going to start turning. And I'm making very, very gentle, delicate turns with this knife. Once again, a sharp knife is essential. If you have a dull knife, this, you will have a very difficult time. So right underneath the surface is my knife. And I'm going around and around, a half an inch about. If it does break on you, it's OK. You can keep going. And I can show you how to put it back together. But it's, uh, we're going to try and get about 12 to 14 inches on the, uh, on the tomato. So. Once again, right under the skin, you can see I've, my knife is making the cuts very gently. And we're just about done. So we're going to go around one more time. And then we're going to stop and I'm going to begin rolling. All right, so what, this is what we have. We have a base and we have our tomato. Very, very, as tight as you can possibly roll that center start and just start rolling. And then I'd like to turn it sideways like so and actually use one hand to roll and the other hand to hold it together. So I've got thumb and forefinger holding the rows together as I'm spinning. This requires a little bit of patience, definitely some practice. I wouldn't expect it to be perfect on your first one, but if you've done as many as I have, it'll definitely come to you after a while. So, it, But it, it's just beautiful on a plate. It lasts a long time. You can put them in a refrigerator and hold them for your dinner party after you've done them, and then pull them out at the last minute, and you'll look like a pro. All right, I'm at the end of the spinning. I'm actually turning it, and that's where that base comes in handy, and here's what you're left with, just a beautiful, beautiful artistic tomato rose. We also did one with an orange. You can do them with oranges, lemons, limes, anything at all. Something a little bit easier, zucchini. We're just going to make an easy cut with a zucchini that you can flip and use as a plate garnish. So I've cut at an angle, kind of like an angular cut on a piece of zucchini that's cut in half. Using my paring knife, I'm making one cut, not all the way to the end, just and another cut right next to it, and a third cut. And what you have is basically a fan, you can see. So you can either use it like this on the plate as a nice fan, or you can turn that interior piece and end up on a plate basically with something like this on the plate. So you can see on these that I've done zucchini and yellow squash and all of them t together. It's good to line a plate of the exterior like that. Two more, getting a little bit more complex. First of all, the apple bird. Great for game dishes, duck, so forth. This gets a little bit, this is a little bit tough. You may have to take your time on this and some practice. What I'm going to do, this is the finished product of the apple bird. So you can see it's, it's really very artistic and cool. What I'm going to do is begin to make cuts on this apple. I'm going to make one here, one there, until they meet. Next to it, about a sixteenth of an inch, I'm going to make another one and go down and on the other side until that one meets and so forth until I do it five times. And then I'm going to spread them apart. So here comes round one. We're going to flip them. All right, those two have met. And it requires a good set of eyes and a sharp knife once again. So here's the second cut. All right, so right now we have two cuts. You can see them. One there, one here comes out, all right? Two cuts. We're going to put that back in. We're going to do cut number three. We're only going to do four because it's 
definitely takes a little bit of time. And you want to make sure you're released every time when you get through there. All right, here comes the fourth. There we go. And let's go back. Release number four. And then go back and let's start to release our levels. So we can take our knife once again, being very careful. And there we go. First one, so you can kind of push them forward, which is nice, like so. And the next one. And finally, the top one. And there you have it. So, little complex, a lot of fun, great on a plate. And last but not least is a fluted mushroom. This is a very difficult procedure that requires a lot of practice and about a thousand mushrooms, but it's fun to show folks. What I'm doing is using my paring knife and I'm gonna make clockwise cuts, letting the knife do the work. I'm not pushing into the mushroom, I'm, letting, I'm just setting the mushroom the knife on the mushroom and letting the knife do the work. I've done thousands of these. So, and I'm gonna turn the mushroom with every third cut, I'm gonna turn the mushroom slightly. So I don't know, hopefully you can get this, but I'm just doing the same turn. Thumb on the mushroom and holding the mushroom the base. And what I'm doing is making the slightest little peels and cuts into this mushroom. And you'll end up with something that you can saute in butter, lemon, so forth, and use as a garnish on two pieces of beef. Very popular, so two little small turnado of beef, two four ounce medallions, perhaps a little foie gras, and then some fluted mushrooms browned on top. So I hope you've enjoyed the little garnish tour and uh, you know, get in the kitchen, give them a try. You're gonna make some mistakes. It's not a big deal. They're a lot of fun to play with. This is called technically garmanger in my industry and I hope you enjoyed it so much. <laughs>